Hey, Dirty Dan here again. So every shop you run into where you need a bigger, a better tool, but you don't always have the money, so you buy something used and old. Let's take a look at this drill press. So I got this thing, Facebook Marketplace, only $65. Everybody knows that one of these, you're gonna spend a couple hundred dollars on a nice big tall stand-up one. But this one has some issues. One, it looks like hell. Two, everything was stuck and rusted and not moving at all. The chuck's missing, and when you turn this thing on, you have to turn the chuck and get it going to get it to spin, more than likely a start capacitor. So we're going to clean it up, get everything freed up, get it dialed up a little bit, and then we're going to replace that start capacitor and see if we can get this thing going. So I do have my dumb moments, and this was one of them. This thing actually comes off. There's just two set screws on here, and it slides right off the pole. So we're going to tear the pole apart and clean these parts individually. Same thing with the pole. You just have a lock ring here at the top. Take the set screw loose, take the brass hammer, knock that off. And then we're going to pull out the gear track and the actual base of the drill. Well, the middle base platform, whatever the hell you want to call it. And then we'll take it apart our way and clean it up. Well, she turned out pretty nice. Look at that, nice and smooth. Well, there was a couple spots we couldn't get out, but it's okay because it doesn't move right there, so it's fine. We're gonna go ahead and get this base painted up and get this pole oiled up so it doesn't rust. So while the paint's drying on the base pedestal, we went ahead and took the platform apart. And as you can see, we got our disc off. We got it cleaned up for the most part. That backside's still pretty rough. And this is the mechanism that it went into. You see there's a bolt here so you can actually turn and tilt the deck, but it was stuck. So we took the bolt out, we got it to where it'll come off, and we'll go ahead and take this off and get it cleaned up in here as well and ready for paint. All right, we got the first coat of paint on here. Everything is looking great. Getting everything taped off on here. We'll go ahead and uh, spray this down and get it ready to go. And we got our capacitor ordered. Not too bad. Obviously, I don't care if this is green, whatever, it's still going to work just fine. This is not a full restoration of a vintage drill. This thing's from the 90s. But anyway, I'll take some stuff and clean that off after I got to tape it off and got a little carried away. But anyway, not looking bad. Well, it's looking great, but there's something missing right here. We don't have any way to clamp anything down on here. Well, we're going to fix that right now. Bam, there you go. Look at that. This is a three inch vise. We got it bolted down to the platform in a couple spots here. And uh, this thing's really great. So I don't do a whole lot bigger than three inch stuff, but it's nice because you can adjust it. And look at that, it turns. Same thing with this one, you can turn it. And you can move it sideways if you need to. Look at that, big clamp. And it was only $50. We got our capacitor in, and now you're thinking, did it work? Well. No, it, it didn't work. It still turns on, but it still needs a kickstart. Uh, that is the limit of my electronic drill information knowledge realm. So if any of you out there can help me diagnose this, I would greatly appreciate it. But regardless, it does work and it does do what we need it to do. It's just a little sketchy and that's how we like it here. I'll zoom in a little bit and show you guys how this cool vice works and show you how this drill does with some really worn out drill bits. Turn it on. Now, welcome to Sketchy Town. Turn it on and give it a kickstart. And it works just like it's supposed to. Now, let's say you want to drill over here. All you gotta do is rub this down, bring it over to where you want it. So, go right here. Same thing. Voila. At least it shuts off safely. And just a little quick tip, these metal shavings, you get down in here everywhere, clean them out because if they get in these threads, they're going to rust and it's going to make your life a nightmare. Also, if you have a metal bin you can put underneath your drill press or some kind of container to help catch the shavings, it'll make your life way easier. Let's wrap this up. Well, there it is. The main goal of this was to have a stand-up floor model drill press at an affordable price for your home DIY guy or your small shopper, even a big shop. Everybody likes saving money and they don't build them like they used to, so sometimes the older ones are nicer. 
under $150. It's working, it's operating. Yeah, it's got a hand start and it'll probably take my hand off one day, but we're gonna get that figured out soon because somebody out there knows the answer and can help me. We got some new videos coming up. We're gonna get back onto our regular schedule. We're still gonna keep with Tuesdays, but we're gonna do more updates on the green 1953 Dodge M37, as well as the finishing touches on the 47 Ford before it goes back to Bobby so he can enjoy it once it stops raining here in North Carolina. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Happy hot rodding.